So Parag Shah, I want you to jump in, if you will, on this issue. Um, Parag is a defense attorney. He's also author of the book called The Code. Help me walk through a little bit of the, the, what is normally a very boring topic. Probate court is almost never covered unless it's Anna Nicole Smith or, say, a, a case like this. But what is the significance of what Kyle just reported? And that is that there is this request for an emergency hearing, time-sensitive issues. Tell me, walk me through it. Sure, absolutely. So when you die, your spouse, if you die without a will, your spouse normally gets everything. But if your spouse is the reason you're dead, then that's, that's a challenge that the family members can make in probate court. And so they're making this challenge saying, look, the husband is the one who's the wrongdoer here. Someone else needs to be in charge of her estate. And so an administrator will be appointed. And it could be anybody in the family, whoever would be best suited to handle her affairs. And so they're going into court saying, look, we need an emergency hearing to make me frank the person to handle this estate. It should not be the husband because he's the reason we're in this mess. And we got life insurance, other people contacting us, ready to disperse money to beneficiaries. And um, the husband is not the right person to make those decisions. So, I mean, that's a fascinating aspect as well, because the only life insurance documents that we saw were work related. And Kyle, I think you remember those documents. We got those early in the case. This was, I think, before CC was really in the picture, because Shanann is listed as, um, I think, one of the, the policyholders on his work insurance, correct? And also Bella. Right. Uh, it's from 2015. Chris was working at Anadarko at the time. He had just gotten hired, hired at that oil company. Um, but we know he at least had child life insurance back then. So without CC on the policy and at least with the and was was there a policy taken out on Shannon as well? Or do we only remember Bella? I'm trying to think back seven weeks or I believe six there weeks. I believe there was also spousal life insurance. So real quickly, Parag, what, what would that mean if the if the parents in this case, if the Rusick uh, family has filed this, this probate case and said, we need an emergency hearing because there's time sensitive issues like the car, I'll get to that in a moment, um, and the life insurance, is it that they are looking to become the beneficiaries to, to keep Chris Watts from being the beneficiary and then spending that money, say, on jail costs? So it depends on how the life insurance policy is written. So normally life insurance policies have layers of beneficiaries. If it can't go to one, it'll go to the next. If it's already exhausted, meaning the kids and the husband, then yeah, the state, is one of the duties of the administrator is to figure out where that money should go and how it should be dispersed and among who it should go to. I cannot imagine what it's like for a guy sitting in a cell 23-7. That's 23 hours a day with only one hour to go out and do some reading to be hand-delivered one of these to his cell because he's not going to the mail room. But they mailed these documents to him. It's listed right there. Officially, it was delivered. His address is the Weld County Jail. Um, he would be reading these over. And you're the defense attorney. You know how your defendants react when they get this kind of news. What, what would this be saying to him and what would he and his attorneys be doing with this? Well, there's going to be a time frame in which he has to object to say, look, I'm the proper person to be handling these matters. And so initially he's going to look at it like, man, I, I really don't want to be cut out of this stuff because I'm sure he needs he probably wants to use that money for experts or other things. I know he has a public defender, but he could use some income at this point, and he doesn't want to be taken off all the documents because he says he didn't do anything wrong. Can you, can you explain one line to me? It may mean nothing, but it sort of stood out to me and my spidey senses are tingling. Um, Parag, it says the nominee has priority for appointment because, and they checked off the box that says statutory priority. Are they saying that somewhere in Colorado law, we are the people that should be adjudicating this probate because that guy is in a cell and may ultimately end up a convicted murderer or is it something much less than that so it's similar to what you're saying every statute in the united states has a statute that says if you're the wrongdoer you can't be the proper person and so there is a statute in colorado that probably says something like if this person is the wrongdoer who it's supposed to go to then statutorily the parents or somebody else can come and and be the right person so it, it's a mix of both of those things do these clients typically get really angry when they receive this kind of news when they're locked up i, I think most paperwork that they get 
um, regarding the ancillary things that aren't dealing with the criminal case um, become very they become very angry and confused and there's not a lot of uh, legal advice they can get you know their criminal lawyer may only know the things dealing with the criminal case and may not have the ability to advise him on what to do in probate court and he may not have the money to hire a lawyer to do it so at the end of the day uh, he may not file an objection or this may just go through the probate court uh, without him saying anything Hey, Prague, is it a big problem that she didn't have a will? There, there, listen, there are so many Americans that don't have a will. I mean, a lot of people think about it the minute they get pregnant. Some people think, oh, my goodness, I'll get around to that. But is this a big problem for uh, Shanann's family if she didn't have a will? In, in her situation, no, because most likely if she had a will, her will would have said everything goes to my husband or in the alternative, everything goes to my kids because they're not in the picture most likely an estate was going to get set up anyway or uh, somebody was going to have to intervene because if she had a will that's probably what it was going to say and the state will step in and adjudicate for the lack of all of that correct right yeah, right. yeah. Uh, kyle i want you to uh, bring in what i think might be one of the biggest bombshells in this probate news and it's the last page it always is it's always the last page. if you ever get a court filing go to the very last page and read backwards it's a tiny little piece of print that tells what the next step is in this case and if you have a drink if you're in the middle of sipping it hold on swallow it because you don't want to be spraying your living room uh, with your cup of coffee what is it like you said, it's on the last page. They're going to have a court hearing about this matter. Um, it's going to be a telephone court hearing. Everyone's going to dial into one telephone number because Shanann's family, they, they live in North Carolina. Chris is in Colorado. But Chris, presumably, according to these documents, is going to be part of that call. So Shanann's family may have to sit on the phone with her accused killer um, as they sort this matter out. So let me get this straight. For seven weeks, this family has been... Uh, barely able to breathe, has had their life completely upended, have had to file probate in their daughter's death and the death of their granddaughters, and now may have to actually have a chat on the phone with the man accused of doing it all. Is that what that paperwork says? That's exactly right. He may be dialing in from the Weld County Jail on the phone with Shanann's parents. And so just so I'm clear, Parag Shah, that's what that means, right? It doesn't mean only your representative. When you have a representative, when you have a lawyer, it means you too. You have the right to be part of your defense and your representation. You have the right to be present for all of these processes, whether they're on the phone or in person, correct? Right. He has the right to be there. He can be there. Most likely his defense lawyer will probably uh, tell him to invoke the fifth, not say anything, and maybe just file a written objection or something of that nature. Um, but most likely his lawyer is going to tell him not to say anything on Can that Can I call. ask you something, Proud? Sure. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this. It's sort of in the weeds, but in this case it, it matters. Would the family be notified of every person on that call, even if he or she decides not to speak? Meaning, if Chris Watts is on that call and listening in real time and decides not to say a word, is the family at least entitled to know he's on the line? All parties are notified of any conference calls, scheduling, courts. So because the family is a party to the to the petition, they're going to be notified of, of, of everything regarding who's on what call, who's at what court hearing, all those things. I, have you ever had a call like that in your practice, Parag? Have you ever had to sit through anything like this? No, no, and thank goodness. I never want to ever sit through oh. anything like this. This is a horrible situation, and my uh, heart goes out to the, to the family.